these machines are you know 20 something years old um, and we're still able to produce a really really fine looking product um, something that really I try to compete with guys that have got some newer machinery and that's something that I take a bit of pride in and I don't know my own little ego trick maybe in terms of saying look what I can do with stuff that's maybe not as new and trash hot as all the other guys. All right, workshop update number five, here we go. You guys might have noticed that we've been posting all the photos and then we try to tag the customers as well for a couple of reasons, obviously to get the product out there, but also to give the customer an idea of what they're actually getting. You know, photos on a website are always nice and shiny and they always look the part, but let's make sure that the product replicates that exactly and that's what we try to do with all the photos that we post online. Uh, so hopefully people have been seeing those. What are they? Look, today's most recent one, a 1JZ 12 injector, the RB30 rocker covers, the billet RB30 rocker covers, billet 2Js, billet RBs, uh, some carbon 2Js and also some carbon RBs have been going out the door. So that's since our last update. So things have been going good on the, uh, on the sales front, so I can't complain. On the back of that, you guys have most probably seen that we've been doing some uh, stock updates as well, but uh, that's something that's been helping us push the product and to give us some more product that's all on the shelf. So all my RB and all my 2J products are all online and on the shelf ready to go. So you guys have to just pretty much pick your color, pick your combination and uh, away you go. Just to give you guys a bit of an example, here's one I prepared earlier for Justin. Justin's getting this manifold sent out, RB26, uh, anodized all in black with a Kevlar plenum uh, all done. Obviously, the Kevlar part is something that I outsource, as you guys most probably know. Not all the billet stuff is made here. Then it gets sent out to the anodizing and all assembled. This manifold is actually going to get, uh, apart from what you see here, it's going to have the billet water rail, which goes on the bottom of these. I've tested these. You guys might have seen some uh, posts that I've put up regarding the 3D printing and the test fitting of these on an RB26 engine. So I made some small changes to them, uh, hence why we had to do the revisions. Uh, and here we are. So Justin, stay tuned. It's coming your way in the next couple of days. After that, let's not forget the RB30 rocker cover. I'm pretty happy with these. how these have come out actually, just in case you haven't noticed the amount of videos that I've been posting online about these. I'm really proud about the, the, the results I'm getting from our machinery. We are limited in terms of machinery. I don't have all brand new fandangle stuff. These machines are, you know, 20 something years old um, and we're still able to produce a really, really fine looking product. Um, something that really I try to compete with guys that have got some newer machinery um, and that's something that I take a bit of pride in and it's my own little ego trick maybe in terms of saying look what I can do with stuff that's maybe not as new and trash hot as all the other guys but um, this is the RB30 rocker cover again a bunch of these have been going out I've got plenty of stock on the shelf um, the reason why I've been doing this lately is just simply been putting stuff on the shelf in the past I haven't really had much if any at all stock um, and that's just caused me way too many problems. Missed out on plenty of opportunities because of it and I'm just trying to change things around in 2025. And then that leads on to stock. Um, how much have I got and what have I been doing, I suppose, lately? You guys might have seen our diff hats. We've got, uh, I think, another 30 something diff hats left on the shelf. We made a batch of 40. Again, like I was saying before, we're just trying to make stock of absolutely everything that I make. So during the diff hats, at the same time on another machine, we were running our RB and 2J billet and carb uh, billet carbon intake manifolds. So all the components for those are all on the shelf. So pretty much a customer, like I had last week, a customer rings up, orders it, and within two, three days, the manifold was ready to go. So that's the whole idea of what we've been trying to do in the last at the end of December, oh, sorry, at the end of 2024 and leading into this year in 2025 is make sure that we've got plenty of stock on the shelf, have it there and available. Everyone wants everything yesterday, so I'm just trying to cater for that. Then in regards to what's next for the stock side of things, I've got the Billet RB26 cam cover set. Now this cam cover set, uh, you might, might notice just looking in the background, I've got some 3D printing going on at the moment. Uh, there's some slight revisions that I'm making to these. Um, they are going to still be the pretty much a, a replica of the factory one, 
uh, obviously in billet because it's just nicer and shinier. Uh, but the, also the benefit of that is that I'm moving things around to make them look a little bit better once they're installed in an engine bay. So things like making sure the fittings are perpendicular to make everything nice and square, to try and clean up an engine bay, to move away from the factory, what the factory tries to achieve, but trying to move it more in line with what the aftermarket wants. So keeping things nice, clean, symmetrical, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just doing some final prints at the moment. We're just adjusting, I think this one I've just adjusted the coil cover and some bolt hole locations for the cam gear cover. Apart from that, the cam gear cover is printed, done and all sorted. And I'm just test fitting it on an RB26 block end head that I've got downstairs. Uh, and then once I've done that, I will then go ahead and just put the RB30 block on put the RB30 lower timing belt cover and then make it to match that as well. So something I've done in the past, but just trying to refine everything and improve it just that little bit more before I go and run it. I think I'm doing a batch of 10 or 20 of these rocket covers, uh, yeah, billet cam cover sets. So stay tuned, I'll be doing those in the next week or so. Where's that lead us on to? Up to the workshop, I suppose, the workshop in general. Been moving along quite nicely. As per every other workshop, they have their mishaps, they have their dramas, things get delayed, and we're always set back, and being always busy and never being able to catch up, it's kind of like a, like a catch-22, so I'm kind of trying to chase my tail all the time, which is part of the joys of having a business, I suppose. But what I've got going on in the background is we've finally set up the probing, which is from a distributor in the US, not a distributor, he's actually the manufacturer of um, the product itself. It's called, it's from a company called Drewtronics. They actually pro provide a really affordable probing option and seems to be working absolutely fine on our VM3, the five axis machine that I've got at the moment. That's the first machine I've set it up on. I've got some products that I make for a third party, which I can't disclose, and we need to do some really tight tolerance stuff. So I've pretty much, oh, well, I've, the, I've purposely set it up on that machine to try and check everything so to do some in-process checking with the help of obviously with Fusion, Autodesk Fusion. So that's been a really big thing. I'm actually just about set up to, or just about ready to set up machine number one and two, our HAS VF2s. Uh, then with probing and then the, the only thing I've got left is the Herco. But the Herco, as we all know, just runs CSF day in, day out, five, sometimes six, maybe seven days a week. And runs, you know, anywhere from 10 to 14 hours a day. So. That machine itself doesn't really do anything apart from CSF. We've got um, a continual volume of that work to pretty much dedicate a machine to that and that only. Uh, something else that's been happening in the background, I think uh, Ash, our guy here, will actually show you some footage of it. I'm building a new office. Uh, this office that I'm currently sitting in at the moment will now become, or will soon become, sorry, our QC in our assembly office and as long with where I'm sitting right now will be like a grinding room to deburring, grinding any products that are required prior to, prior to QC and prior to assembly. Uh, the majority of that I do for QC of prepping their cores and all that kind of stuff for CSF uh, but I'm just trying to keep, keep everything as clean as possible and reduce some mess that's floating around the shop so this will be a grinding room where uh, the camera is at the moment that will now become the assembly QC area and to my right which is going to be um, just more and more storage for stock as you'd expect the more stock you make you got to put more you got to make more and more space for it hence the reason why I'm moving things around and with that I've started to make a mezzanine or continue the mezzanine itself which flows on to currently only half the shop but it's going to be three quarters of the shop would now be a mezzanine and have a new office over there just something a little bit nicer, hopefully some air conditioning with this heat. Um, and maybe a little kitchenette to make it a little bit fancy upstairs, a nice place to have lunch and chill out. Uh, and then obviously for meetings with customers. So, but apart from that, um, that's it on the mezzanine side of things, the workshop front. And there's no other developments for the time being. There are some things I'm working in the background, uh, but I'll give you some more details much probably on that one in the next one. So what's been happening on the scene lately? Uh, drag racing side of things has been a little bit quiet. Uh, the hot weather here in Australia has really held things back. Um, and no one wants to go drag racing in the heat. It just doesn't work for anything or anyone. 
uh, cars, engines, people. It just doesn't work well. So uh, we've just seen the couple of race meets locally kick off again. Some customers have been out there testing their cars with some promising results. Uh, namely, uh, Rod Harvey with his Toyota Supra. You guys must probably know I've been sponsoring that car for around about, I'm going to say five years. Well, more than five years, actually. In 2018, we went on Orlando with his new car. Uh, so, yeah, since, you know, 2017 from his previous car up until now, this car has gone uh, undergone a pretty much a complete revamp. Um, a bunch of stuff's been changed on that car um, to kind of bring it into new age kind of stuff. A lot of the stuff was five plus years old from his previous car, so it was about time the got, car got a bit of a birthday. That said though, we've continued to test version one of our billet cylinder head. Uh, we made some changes to it. Um, simply, what did we do? Just added more water to it. We're just trying to keep those valve seats happy. That's the biggest ch challenge with any head, doesn't matter billet or cast. Uh, and uh, he actually went back on the dyno, uh, a whole day on the dyno, and then went to the track and went to the start line, I think six times or something like that. And the same head, without removing it from the engine, stayed on. Um, not something you hear about all that much, especially with these, um, especially, especially with the front runners in terms of the sports compact import scene. So, which has been promising. Um, I've got version two. I've just been given a bit of a hurry up with that, actually, in terms of getting that finished. Uh, what's version two? Version two is just a bit of a, a better product. No major changes from version one in terms of what we've done with version one. We've implemented all those changes into version two. Uh, just now with a little bit more time. The first time I made the first cylinder head, uh, we were under the pump trying to get it out the door. Uh, now we've got a little bit of time up our sleeve. We can muck around and try to get the finer details, everything ticked off like it should be and like you'd expect for something that um, takes so long to make. So that's pretty much on the racing front side of things. Um, what else have we got going on? I think that's pretty much it. So that wraps up workshop update number five. Thanks for watching. As usual, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, feel free to comment. Let me know what you guys want to see or talk about. And um, see you on the next one. Thank you.